Hello and welcome to Telford the Future and today we are taking a look at a planning application from the Vistry Group for the HEM area of Telford. Now here is the application here as you can see TWC 2022-0796 it says the application is for the erection of 299 dwellings um, on the development okay um, by the Vistry group okay so let me tell you a little bit more about the uh, the bit of history on the particular development itself well the development itself lies to the east of um, of the area of Sturchley um and it's sort of sandwiched between Sturchley and Halesfield it's a large sort of um green open space area with a brook running through it quite a nice area um originally um it was actually going to be the site of the um the new um Talford hospital <coughs> however it was decided not to build it there and TDC rechanged it and they applied to for a change of use on the 14th of the 12th 1990 an application was put in for the change of use for it to be residential housing then scroll all the way back today to the present day and on the 1st of the 3rd 2020 a screening opinion which is a basically more like a um, a mini consultation on on the feasibility of developing the area um that was done on the 1st of the 3rd 20 um and <coughs> the outline application went in on October 2021 it was given planner permission in December um in August 22 um, and the new application so yeah it was given approval sorry it was the outline winning in October 2021 and the approval was given on August 2022 by September 2022 this application was in jobs are good and okay um, and that's what's in at the moment okay this particular planning application so the applicant is the Vistry Group. Now, the Vistry Group is made up of Bovis Homes and Linden Homes. Okay. <clears throat> now, let me just tell you a little bit of the history of the company. First of all, um, Bovis Homes have been a developer for many, 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 many years, um, and in a couple, few years back. The developer got into trouble due to poor standards of building and it lost its um, star rating with the House Builders Federation. Um, it spent a lot of money um, um, compensating um, its customers and the company became slightly vulnerable and Linden Homes wanted to buy the company. However, this was turned down and eventually the um, the leader um, or the CEO of Linden Homes joined Bovis and they reformed this new company known as the Vistry Group, which basically meant running two separate companies, which was Bovis and Linden together. Um, Bovis themselves um, have had a rich history in Telford. They're currently developing this particular site here, Haygate Fields in Wellington. They've been there. They shared that site with um, Anwil Homes. They're also more recently developing the quarters at Red Hill, that particular site there. Um, and they're developing that under the Vistry Group. Um, and Linden Homes are on that development too. Um, and they're sharing that particular development. Um, but Bovis would be more well known for their developments at Prasley Park. They built um, a flagship development there. But also they came to Telford in around about 1978 at Glendening Way um, to build some properties there. But they have been a constant sort of um, face in Telford for many, many years. 
Um, they have re- re- relaunched a new range of houses called the Phoenix Range, which are you know going going very very successful. However, Linden Linden was a very small company initially, and um, they actually. Um, basically went into receivership the company was reformed um, and the company started to grow under its own right again and believe it or not they opened up a new Midlands region and um, Linden's first development in Telford was in Lightmore um, next to the Lightmore care home they had a development there um, and believe it or not, the um, the new office for Linden Homes West Midlands was actually above the sales centre in there until they got a more permanent um, fixture. And, the, and Linden haven't been back in the town since then. Um, and this first development with um, with Bovis is um, the first time we've seen them. And you know, I think Linden built a basic looking house. You can see from these designs on the screen here. Bovis slightly more characterful you know anyway let's um let's take a look at um at, at the proposals for this site so i don't know if you remember um back in 2020 i created this video um based on the outline planning application for this particular development and um back right back in the day um it the 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 original application was for um, originally 350, 350 plots um, with five parcels of land. Um, there was a brief illustration on what the houses would look like. Um, and I think in a way they've actually um, stayed true to that. So if you haven't seen that video then the one that's on the screen now, I would recommend you probably go and have a look at that. I'll put a, li a link in the description box. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, you can it, 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 there's some great drone footage on there and it really does show the characteristics of this particular site. Um, I mean, in terms of constraints on this site, we've got the Nedge Lane running right the way through the development. We've got the Nedge Farm Riding School up the top there. We've got Nedge Hill to the right. We've got the railway to the left. And then we've got this whole bunch of mature trees as well, as you can see, riding up to the, uh, to the, um, to the riding school. So without further ado, let's um, without further ado, let's get down to business and then let's start looking at the um, at the application itself. OK, so what we're going to look at first is the particular the overall planning layout of this new of this new development. OK, OK, my computer might be just a tad slow, so please bear with me. I would appreciate that. Um, okay, there we go. You can see it's one of those, one of those, isn't it? When you want to show somebody something, it just takes forever, doesn't it? Okay, and we're working with PDFs as well. So this is the site now. Okay, the new plan that's gone in. Okay, now we've got three parks, three parcels of land here. You've got this parcel here. You can see my cursor on the mouse. You've got this parcel here, and then further up, you've got this parcel up here, okay? So, this parcel here, which we're going to look at, we'll look at in a bit more detail um, on an individual basis, okay? Um, this particular, um, the, the design, the design of the, uh, of, the of the development in general hasn't actually changed. The road layouts is very similar to what was proposed on outline, Um However, um, the, there's a big emphasis on the open space on this development and I am grateful that that has been done because I think it will, will make the development much, much better. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll, um, we'll have a look at the individual plans. Okay. <clears throat> so this is our phase one plan. Okay. This is just off the roundabout. So now... So as we go into the development, this is the first parcel of the land, which is on the left hand side. OK, phase one. Now, each individual area actually is known as a particular um, style. So this is known as phase one heritage. 
Now, phase one is actually been allocated to Linden Homes, okay? So this is the Linden Homes plot. So Linden are planning 71 plots on that. Originally, in the original proposals, it was 97. So they're, 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 they are short on their designs um, on the plots. So they were, we've got a mixture of eight designs here two three and four bedroom properties okay so let's have a little look over this right so it's it's completely separated from the rest of the development here and there's the spine road running around there okay now looking at it we can see these avenues of semi-detached houses running along here all these streets here have all got semi-detached houses and we've got this nice sort of woodland area here to this side which is alongside the railway um, and that would be nice to look at but i think to me there's too many semi-detached and semi-detached and basic housing along that particular route there the ones in blue are affordable rental and shared ownership properties okay um and it's actually funny that what the only property there that three-story property there with the dormer is the only been built for so that particular thing has only been built for affordable houses but at the top where you've got these little corridors that go out onto the green space the slightly bigger houses have been reserved for that particular look you know we've, we've got a big um drainage pond there as well and here you can clearly see where the um show house area is there as well on there so it looks like they've got the that that area will be completely be the show area now, if we want to look at what house types Linden are proposing for this particular site, we, we're able to do that. So what I will do is I will go into the Linden folder and then we can look at the house types that we've got here. OK, so this is the Cartwright. You can see it's quite plain looking. There's no bells or whistles on it or anything. I was expecting something a little bit more characterful, but I think Linden are maybe the the basic end of Bovis really and I think maybe that's where they're pitching it pretty much like Charles Church do with Charles Church's Tibbersimmer you know they got these arched sort of almost cottagey style um, bits across the windows here these sort of brick lintel areas going on we've got the Elmsley again simple enough design isn't it nothing that really and this is obviously a whole street is going to be full of these the nightly which is a larger house but again it's just not it's got that so it has got that cottage feel the smaller windows you know but it still just doesn't jump out at you the pembroke now this will be presented in a more um basic brickwork to um to this particular one here that i'm illustrating to you but it, again basic enough house type the beckett again it's a simple enough design isn't it it's you know um i can't really say much more than that and the granger okay you can see that plain enough house there this sort of house type is built by that sort of design is built by a lot of different developers you know it's quite a, a very distinctive looking um look, looking house design so there you go we have that there um that particular so that's phase one looked at for Linden Homes. Me personally, I don't like these avenues of basic housing here. I like it mixed up a little bit. Maybe a couple of detached houses in there, maybe. Um, but, you know, it, I don't think it's the most imaginative, um, the most imaginative um, housing scheme I've ever seen. I mean, look at this straight road here. Just a great big row of semi-detached houses. Not great, but they're filling in. I can see why they've done it. They're uh, filling in the plots, aren't they? So let's go over to um, plot two. OK, this is located off the spine road itself. OK, and um, plot two, known as phase two, is just simply called woodland. And I suppose because the woodland edge is just here to this side. OK. Um, woodland itself is being developed by Bovis Homes or proposed to be developed by Bovis Homes. Bovis want to build 78 plots 
Originally, this was split up into two parcels of land. They've combined the two to create the one and created 70. They want to build 78 plots. Originally, they wanted to do 153 on here. So it shows that Bovis have put a lot more emphasis on the detached houses here as of Linden. And I think Linden has been used to throw in as many of the semi-detached basic properties as possible. So we've got two, three and four bedroom houses on Bovis and seven designs. OK, so again, we can see clearly here we can see the show area here. Um, there's a triple garage there, which I'd imagine is going to be the show, the sales office. We've got the affordables highlighted there in blue. We've got the spine roads, and I really do like this design where the landscaping is really good. But we'll look at landscaping separately. You know, you've got a lot of these different designs. You've got some detached, but to me, for the amount of housing, there's just a very limited house type range, really. Um, and you can see here, this line of hedging here is going to be removed by the looks of it. Look. Um, that's running through this particular this particular development. Oh yeah, it is actually that long line of hedge line is going to be removed. That's a shame. Um, but you can see one thing I noticed is the distributor road comes up and then comes to a T junction here. Whereas it really it should just carry on and carry on. The spine road should just carry on. Um, and I think it's like a, a third development at Haygate Fields. It's just a bit you can easily get lost in there really. But yeah, I mean, you can see the designs. They, they they've done the same. The big the bigger houses are overlooking the parkland. We've got a, a big line of um, affordables just running down there now. Um, yeah, so the site is is a bit of an improvement. We've got this here. This this what you call a feature corner. So we've got the three story houses here on that corner, creating the the um, the effect. Um, as you come in there but they're called sort of character corners aren't they where you where you come in same as here you have key on the entrance of a development you have symmetrical key house types um same here look you see as you as you go in i mean so we, i think we better just look at um, some of the house types that um that bovis are proposing perhaps potentially so let's just go into here and have a look at the bovis house types okay so one of the house types here is the Alder, okay? Quite a, it, it's a staple four bedroom house it is, um, but decent bay window in there, integral garage, quite a popular Bovis house type in the Phoenix range. This is a new design that I've not seen. This is the Briar. Well, I do like about this particular Briar is we've got this nice um, detail work over the porch there. A bit of coping different brick coping on the side there so this looks like a corner plot this would be used in um the cypress again another classic free bed from bovis you can see that um timber detail in there and the pillar there on there so quite a quintessential um design from the phoenix range we've got the holly i wouldn't imagine these gable ends are being used um i would think you'll get a more of a basic row on them will probably be used as affordable housing and we've got this mulberry redesigned for this site this mulberry i think it's a lovely design i love the long roof line down there it's a, a very very nice design nice bifold doors at the back of there as well um but nice house type the Rowan, again, that will be one of the affordable properties on the development as well. The um, Spruce, plain design the Spruce is on that. It's not really a lot to write home about with the Spruce. It's plain looking, typical corner plot, semi-detached houses or terraces will be sandwiched onto the back of that, but it's a simple enough design. So there's our both, there they are our Bovis designs, okay? Um... You know, it's quite a big site that it's quite a big site. This 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 phase is like I say, it's going to be 78 plots as um, Linden are building 71. OK, so now we're going to go to the next plot of land. This one at the top here. And basically this one is where the um, distributor road terminates. And you can see we've got the Nedge Lane running down here, cutting through the development. And as you come into the development, 
you are greeted with this big pond to the side of us and, and this particular area which leads up to the Nedge farm has a lot of mature trees on here um, and I think it's used it previously been used as grazing for the for the, um, the the for the horses from the riding school this particular development here has been um, is allocated to Shropshire homes now this is really unusual for Shropshire homes to actually take a development on a, um, on a consortium site so to speak um, because they like their own sort of individual sites but it's nice to see them doing this now Shropshire Homes what they want to do is they want to build 48 plots 48 plots originally there was 49 so the one less um, and this particular phase is called Parkland um, and they are building four and five bedroomed houses six individual designs um, and I really like this I think it looks really good I think Shropshire Homes do a good job of it they've got a good history of being able to uh, develop a site that looks good they're very good on the layouts etc and you can see this if you look at the, the, at the just into the detail of this you can actually see where we've got um, the house types there you've got two different house types but they're actually presented in in opposite mirrored images which really does make a difference on the design that does totally does um every it looks like most properties have got a double garage apart from the smaller properties um and we've got the road sort of snakes in around these trees and they're kept in there so that looks really i think that's really really nice and uh a nice lot of detail in there and then we've got this kind of orchard that's at the back here which gives a really good corridor between here and the riding school so really i think personally really good design i think um they're going to do a good job of that and i actually wish that shropshire homes were big enough to take the entire site on so with that let's have a look at some of the the house types that Shropshire Homes are going to be building on this particular one and here we go first of all we've got the Cardington again a good substantial detached house this is this is I think Shropshire Homes are here you I think you've got Linden Homes to provide the smaller properties Bovis to provide the middle and Shropshire Homes to, to provide the top of the range because there are no affordable houses on the um, Shropshire Homes um, parcel of land again you can see the Derwent there lovely house type I love the hip roofs I love the dif differential of the roof the big chimney it's a lovely looking house um, and this is the kind of I think this is what we need to get back to is different roof lines houses that really do look interesting we've got the Grasmere Grasmere is a simple enough looking house but you know with the with the lintels and stuff above the windows and that really does make a difference to how it looks and the purlins as well you know it's that detail that matters we've got the melvilly very much like the last house type but we've got rooms in the loft as well there so it's um it's a good you know it's just that little bit bigger the Rydal again this house has been built for years with Shropshire homes it's got this lovely ingle nook fireplace there the purlins the it's just a really nice looking house okay again the windermere very like the rydal rooms in the loft there um yeah so what i would say is they are really decent looking house types aren't they so let's just go back to the um let's just go back to that master the master plan again okay the master plan of the development um I'm going to go here back to the master plan okay so there are going to be affordable properties on this development that haven't been allocated um so far but we have 102 affordable rental um, and shared ownership properties and also Vistry partnership have got their own houses as well and that's maybe for rental um we have 102 properties affordable properties on this development originally there's going to be 88 so that's very good um the affordable rental properties are going to be there's going to be 59 plots ranging from one to four bedroomed okay the shared ownership there's only going to be 16 plots and they're going to be two and three bedroom properties Vistry partnership they are doing 27 plots two to four bedrooms 
Now, looking at the actual overall development, the smallest property is just 769 square feet. The largest property being built by um, Shropshire Homes is 2,091 square feet. Okay, The overall site is 91.77 acres. That's 37.14 hectares. And there's a total of 299 plots. Now, what we haven't said is about this particular development here. Now, there's another plot of land here. Um, and that particular plot of land there is just for 51 plots. It isn't in with the plan, so I'm not sure who's going to be developing that. But this is it. That, so that is un unallocated. So at the moment, the whole development is 299 plots. And including the additional houses on that, that further phase, it will bring us up to 348 um, plots. Originally, the development was proposed for up to 350 plots and we have 348. So we are short by a couple of plots. Um, so that's really good. So what we're going to do now is we've, we've got the landscaping plan up. So we're going to have a little look at that. Now, if you can see when you actually enter into the development off the new roundabout at Halesfield, as you come into the development, you can see you're almost can't see any housing it's actually really well landscaped but then you come into the area here where um linden homes is and you can see you've just got this choice of footpaths running around the development here you, they meander in and out um and then we've got the brook running through the middle there disappointed there's not a crossing point at the brook further down that would be nice to do that but we've have got plenty of these green corridors running around okay over here, we've got a play area here next to the Bovis site, um, and we've got um, all these all these drainage ponds. So we've got um, one, two, three, four. There's quite a few of these, and all of these overflow into the brook. So some of these are going to be actually quite nice sort of waterways when they're uh, when they're filled up. Um, so that that's really good. So we've got. A lot of play areas, a lot of pathways. You can see there's another one meandering around the back of the Bovis site there. Um, and that carries on around. We've got the Nedge Lane. Nedge Lane will be closed off to um, to traffic. And I think that's a really good idea because I really wished Nedge Hill was access more accessible and the antisocial behaviour wasn't there. So people could enjoy the area for what it is. Um, the Bovis, the, the Bovis area obviously comes right up here. You've got this mugger um, and play area here, um, down the bottom here. And also this looks like a BMX track of some kind just there. The, the Shropshire Homes part of the site here, which is really laid out well. You've got an or community orchard at the top there. And then you've got these meadow areas. Now there's going to be a lot of these meadow areas here. Now let me just explain what they are. I could, apart from an area where you don't have to cut the grass, what actually they do is they mow into the um, the the meadow. So you've got mowed areas, mowed walkways through there, and you can see this comes all the way around here and links onto Hem Lane. Um, and this has been a very good example of this is Lightmore Village, where they they've done the same sort of thing in their nature reserve, and it does work really well. Um, but I think overall the development is is um, the landscaping is absolutely on point. I cannot fault it. I just feel that I would like a little bit more imagination from the Linden development. Really, I mean, surely we're in. We've got to a point where we should be building things that actually people go. That's really no, no, really. You, it, this was the perfect opportunity to do something different. And what we've getting is just. A standard housing estate that you could find anywhere who is who is to blame for that is it our planning is it the planning in the local council are they just not imaginative enough do they you know have they been to other other areas such as milton Keynes, cambridge and seen what other people are doing have they even been to graven hill and seen what what what's going on there i think 
we need some more imagination out of our planners here because we're only going to get one chance to build this town and we don't want to be building boring looking communities because they will become the slums of the future um you know we can already see on lawley the render is starting to look awful on some of those properties you've i think you've got to f start thinking you know thinking forward so you know the linden side could do with a lot more imagination the bovis one it's okay but it'd be nice to see some big houses mixed in there and it's just and these semis just not put in big linear rows etc um shropshire homes perfect perfect design i love it it's almost like a stately home formation really there very very good development i think um but you can comment on this application um you can get the link is on the uh, on the page i'll upload some of these plans into the folder on the um, media section of the um of the tile for the future facebook page but you know have your say make some comments see what you think about them i've given you the information um you know and i want you know my background is house design and um i have reviewed houses for developers from all over the country you know so i know what a, a good house design looks like i've I, you know i've made a business out of it um so have a really good thing about this guys and see what you think is this good enough is this good enough for telford Okay, guys, well, thank you for watching and um, hopefully I will uh, catch up with you guys soon. Um, have a good day.